Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Map It Forward. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and today on the podcast, we are answering a question about how to deal with inappropriate customers. And this is a question that came after a incident where a customer had, who had never before been inappropriate, had decided that it was okay to be inappropriate uh, to the female staff in a team because they were wearing bikinis and had started to become inappropriate in the way that they were speaking. Today's episode is brought to you by the Coffee Roasters Mastermind Group. If you're a coffee roaster and you're looking to be amongst other people who share in learning and in growing as a coffee roaster, coached by the fabulous Ante Bikic, head to the show notes and click on the link today. So what do you do if a customer is being inappropriate? Now, the situation in this case, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, uh, this is a cafe that is on a beach and the staff wear swimwear. And a customer, a regular customer, never before uh, that had spoken inappropriately, decided to target a couple of the team members and start mentioning comments about Uh, sexually explicit comments on the softer side of sexually explicit but sexually explicit nonetheless and the owner who had taken over ownership of this cafe wasn't sure what was appropriate this was the first time that she has ever owned a cafe and is unsure of how much she should get involved should she leave it to the staff to to talk about should she leave it to uh should she say something herself uh where's the line do you just throw a customer like that out where do we stand on that situation and why i thought it would be a really good opportunity to talk about this is because in the next few episodes we're going to talk about culture and we're going to talk about stakeholders and we're going to talk about the future of our industry and how it's shifting in how decision making happens in a business and this is not just in the coffee industry this is in all industries the way business is happening and the way it's running and deep into the future this is going to be less authoritarian and less a top-down kind of thing, and more uh, inclusive in the workplace. And this is one of those subjects uh, that is getting a lot of attention and has been for the last couple of years. But in, in workplaces where the work has been done in establishing what the culture is and where the boundaries are around assertive communication... And when it's important for staff to say something and when it's important for leadership to step in, these things uh, mean that when somebody is inappropriate, everybody knows how to go into action. So how do we approach the solution to this situation? First of all, I want to say up front, if an employee is feeling uncomfortable by the assertions that a customer has made, the question is not, do we believe the employee? And if you're leaning into, is the employee telling the truth? Uh, And if you ask the employee to prove or justify or uh, did you misinterpret anything that's been said, the signal that you're sending that employee is one of distrust. The leading action around a situation like this should absolutely first of all be to keep that employee safe and let that employee know that you have their back and that you believe them. And the reason this is important is because the moment you're saying to an employee, how do you know they didn't mean this and how do you know they didn't mean that? What you're saying is that this is a workplace where you have to prove that you didn't participate in this sexual endeavor that may or may not have happened in your mind, rather than just put a boundary up that prevents it from happening again. 
So in this situation, as I'm sure you'd figured out by now, given that I speak about assertiveness so much, this is about assertive behavior. So if an employee says to you, listen, this customer who has never been inappropriate before is now all of a sudden starting to be appropriate and comment on my bikini. The action there should be that you ahead of time have a policy that states what we consider as a workplace inappropriate behavior. And for all of you who are listening to this and that are thinking, well, shouldn't they expect these kinds of comments because they're wearing bikinis? Well, no, no. You're on a beach and you have a cafe and it's really hot and what you wear does not absolutely does not form as an invitation for somebody to be sexually explicit towards you in a workplace. So let's just clear that up as well. Now, having a policy that you not only write down, but also speak to your staff about and let them know that in this workplace, these are the behaviors we do not tolerate. We do not tolerate them from staff to staff contact. We do not tolerate them from leadership to staff contact. And we do not tolerate them from customer to staff contact and vice versa. So that helps people understand where the boundaries are. And boundaries are really, really important when it comes to assertive communication. The next thing that's important when it comes to assertive communication is understanding what happens when boundaries are breached. And in this situation, this is a clear example of when boundaries are breached. And a a quick temperature test about when a boundary is breached is when somebody feels unsafe uh, when they know what the boundaries are. So if an, an employee absolutely 100% of the time has the right to feel safe in the workplace. A part of feeling unsafe is when anybody is inappropriate to them. And in the workplace, when you've clearly defined and helped a customer understand, as well as your staff understand what you believe appropriate and inappropriate behavior to be and have communicated that with individual staff members then you're able to understand when your staff come to you and say, hey, listen, this customer said this and this is what, what, uh, why I think that this is inappropriate. It's made me feel unsafe. Your action is, would you like me to speak to that customer or would you like to workshop some responses that you first say to the customer and I can back you up on? And then you go into a discussion with your staff about how to create a solution. Because like everything, it's all gray. Some staff are going to feel that they would like to be empowered to confront this situation as it is. And in other times, they're going to want you to step in and have this person no longer have the opportunity to communicate with them. A third alternative is that the staff member doesn't want anything said to this customer and just never wants to deal with this customer again. And if that's workable for you uh, in your workplace, if that's something that you can deal with, even though it's going to be much more trouble than you may think it's worth and it's going to be a complex solution to get that happening, the more you back your staff up, In situations like this, the more you're going to show your staff that they have a reason to stay in this business because they feel valued, they feel respected, and they feel heard. Just to help with something there, why would a staff member not want you to say something to an employee who was saying things that were sexually explicit? And I'm sure it goes without me having to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, because in case you aren't thinking about this, it's important for you to know it. Sometimes we as women feel that if you confront an abuser, that abuser is going to target us when we're out of your line of sight. 
So an employee may feel really worried that if you confront someone who has been sexually explicit to them in an underhanded kind of way, that if you as an employer go and say something to that staff, that that customer, the customer may feel that they want to retaliate against the employee and follow them home and perhaps attack them or it, whether that be verbal, verbally or physically. Uh, when that perpetrator feels shamed, they may feel the that they need to reclaim some of that power by retaliating against your staff member. So when, and I have this conversation with many men in our industry, when men just say, or when men say, why don't women just complain? Why don't they just complain to the their boss or why don't they complain to the police or why don't they report? That's a really great example of why we don't do that. It's typically because we fear retaliation from men who are typically physically stronger than us uh, and we feel fear retaliation from being shamed by people. And so here it is important for you as an employer to find a way to empathize with staff who are feeling victimized in a way or attacked by a customer, whether it be verbally uh, in a sexual way or verbally in a perhaps just aggressive way. And this happens a lot to women and I'm sure to men. I'm not a man, uh, but I know I've seen it happen many, many times with women in the coffee industry and it's definitely happened to me a number of times through my career as a barista uh, and it wasn't fun and it felt very scary and it felt very dangerous Uh, and so we have to get better at learning how to protect ourselves and each other and part of your job as an employer when you are in situations where your staff are being uh, spoken to in a way that they don't appreciate then it is a part of your job as a leader to deal with that situation in a more nuanced way. I hope you found this helpful. And if you have, please consider subscribing, whether it's on podcast listening apps or on our YouTube channel, where we would really love it and really appreciate it if you would also hit that bell so that you get notified every time an episode of the podcast comes out. Tough subject today, but it needed to be spoken about. Peace, love and peanut butter friends. Have an amazing rest of your day.